Hey, this is René. Welcome back to another video. And today um, we will be working with the Money Flow Index indicator and build an expert advisor on top of this indicator. And yeah, we will see if this can be a profitable system. So first of all, what is the Money Flow Index uh, indicator? You find it in the navigator in your MetaTrader 5. If you click on indicators, if you click on volumes, there you will find the money flow index. If you apply it to the chart, you will see it has uh, several inputs uh, like the period, um, the volume calculation method. I think um, this indicator pretty much shows where where the where the price is going um, and. The general idea is to see if um, the price reaches a specific level, for example, 80 or 20. And in this case, at 80, we want to sell, at 20, we want to buy. So this is, yeah, it for the, for the like general idea for this program. And then, yeah, let's see if this might work. So in this video, we will build the program. Whenever we want to write a program in the MetaTrader 5, we usually use the MetaQuotes language editor. You find it if you click on tools and MetaQuotes language editor, and this will open the program for you, which we use to develop and create um, uh, programs. So in the upper left corner, you can click on new, select expert advisor template, click next, and then you can um, choose any name. We choose money flow index uh, trader, for example, or strategy, however you want to call it. It um, doesn't really uh, doesn't really matter here. Then you click on next, next and finish, and this will create a new expert advisor for you. So first of all, I like to remove all these gray lines because they are comments. And then I like to rearrange my curly brackets a little bit. And in this video, I will go through the uh, programming part a little bit faster. So um, yeah, make sure to copy everything. And I will not explain everything in like complete detail. But if you are interested in learning how to program, um, yeah, just click on the link below this video or in the video description, you will find a link to the website where you can also see a complete course. And yeah, it makes sense that you look at the videos on the website uh, where I explain everything that you will learn in this, um, in this, in this course. So you know before you uh, um, participate what will expect you and if it fits your needs. And in this course, I explain everything in like in really in a detailed um, uh, um, yeah, in a detailed way, and it is absolutely suitable for beginners. But in this video, we will just go through everything a little bit faster. But if you watch the other tutorials on this channel, you will still un understand it. So first of all, we will create this uh, handle um, variable for the uh, money flow index handle. And then we will initialize it in the on init function. There is a predefined function for the money flow index indicator, which is IMFI. And you can see all the um, um, all the uh, parameters here. So first of all, the symbol, which is usually the chart symbol. And then we choose a period. We can just choose period current, which is the chart period here. Then we have the uh, the, the, the periods for the calculation. I think the default value should be 14. Yes, it is. And then we can choose um, if we want volume real or volume tick. I think since I trade um, CFD and Forex with this broker, I should choose tick because I think I do not have real volume here. So yeah, but you can choose whatever you want. You can also use volume real, of course, if you want to. So we have this um, uh, handle now, and now, as always, if we work with um, uh, indicators, we can create, uh, we can get the values from this indicator using the copy buffer function. So we say copy buffer, we use the handle that we just created and initialized. Then we have the buffer number zero, or you can also choose main line because there is only one line, and in this case, it is usually zero. And then we have the starting position one and we want a count of one, I think. And we store the values in the MFI array. Then just to check if everything is working, we can print it in the chart. 
So we say MFI at index zero. And we can run this in the strategy tester, I think. There was one uh, closing bracket missing. So if we compile this, we now have uh, around 20 lines of code, and this will give us uh, the money flow index value. So uh, go back to your MetaTrader 5, and then go to View Strategy Tester, and then you can choose any expert that you want to test. Um, you should choose, of course, the money flow index strategy, or the name that you picked for your, for your program, pretty much. And then let's say we will test um, in Euro, US dollar, and for the current year. This is just to see if everything is working and if we get the values from this money flow index indicator. So let's have a look here. So we wanted the value from the last bar. So let's have a look. This should be the value and have a look at this uh, row here. This should be the value displayed in the upper left corner and this seems to work. We can check this for, uh, for another bar. Yes, it is working. So we now have this value. And what we want to check now is uh, we want to check if this MFI value is above a specific boundary. And we can say something like, let's create input variables for this. Input double MFA upper or cell level. And we say 80. And we say MFE by level should be 20. So now we can check if the MFI or MFI yeah, value is above or equal this MFI cell level or if it is smaller or equal the MS, uh, MFI by level. So if either one of them is correct, then we want to trade. And there's one more thing that we should do. Since we only want to check this condition once per bar, we should make sure that we only calculate this once per bar. So the easiest way is uh, to do something like this. Create a bar's total global variable. Initialize it in the onInit with a return value of this iBars function. Then you will store the total amount of bars in the current chart in this variable. And then you can do the same thing pretty much in the onTick function. Whoops, this is an integer value. So we say bars and we choose uh, or we, we, we use the iBars function again. And then we check if bars um, is greater than bars total. And in this case, we want to update the bars total variable because then we know there's a new bar, we process all the code inside of this if statement, and then, yeah, we will do the same thing again once the next bar appears. Okay, so this is working. Now we only need the Ctrade class to create positions. So include the um, Ctrade class like this, and then create a global variable. I mean, you do not have to make this a global variable. Yeah, we, maybe we do not uh, create a global variable here, but we can also create the trade object here, of course. And in this case, we want to sell if we, re if we hit this sell level. So for this um, sell function of the um, Ctrade class, we have to provide a volume that we want to sell. And I like to create a input variable for this. So we can say, for example, the lots are 0.1 per default, and the user might change this. So we, whoops, what was this? So we want to um, trade the current chart symbol, and we open at the current price, which is for a sell trade, of course, the bid price. So what we do here is we calculate the bid price using the symbol info double function. And as always, we should round this value like this. Now we can choose um, this bid price as a opening price and we could provide a SL and TP, but I do not want to do this right now. First of all, I want to check if everything is working as I want it to work. Oh, and um, if you do it like this, like if you wrap your cell function in an if statement, you can also check if um, the operation was successful and then you can write something like um, a new cell signal 
opened or sent order number and then you can say trade result order. So you always know what your program is doing and then you are not confused if there is something happening. For example, a position opening. So um, we do the same thing here for a buy signal, but instead of selling, we buy, of course, and we choose the ask price because buy positions are also or always open at the uh, symbol ask price. These are the changes that we make and then we say new buy signal, of course. So if we compile this, um, I can show you the program again. So um, now we have like uh, 50 lines of code. Um, maybe I can <laughs> remove some of these lines so you can see everything. Yeah, so we have uh, like 50 lines of code here. Just copy everything and then we can go to the strategy tester again. You can now see the inputs here because we created three input variables. And if we start the program now, we should see uh, that positions are opened if we hit um, either 80 or 20. So you can see here we hit the 80 level, we sell and we get this information here. New sell signals and order number two. And then we can also wait for some buy signals. Yeah, there we saw some buy signals. Um, Looks like some of these bars were below 20. So maybe we should make some adjustments and say that we only want like one open position or we only want to trade um, when the MFE drops below 20 for the first time and then it has to be like in the middle um, before we can get another position. So we can achieve this by saying we want a Boolean global variable and we can say is trade allowed and we only open positions if this is trade allowed variable is true. Um, so we say here before we open any position we check if is trade allowed is true. So we move the whole uh, order opening block inside of the body of this if statement. And then um, whenever um, the price is um, in between, like if this MFE is smaller than MFE cell, and MFE zero is greater than MFE buy. In this case, we say is trade allowed is true. And if there was a signal and a trade was open, we say is trade allowed is false. So this will um, prohibit some of the signals here. So let's run this again. And then we can maybe also add some uh, TP and SL points here for the uh, for the trades. Okay, now you can see we do not open that many uh, buy signals here in this situation, but only only a few. So now we will have to add the TP and SL points. Um, I like to make it um, make them input variables. So we can say something like TP points. Uh, I don't know, 100. Or we can say TP percent. Let's make something new here. Then it's a double variable, of course. So we can say TP percent. And for example, 0.5% of the current price. And SL percent might be something like 1.5. And now we can use these variables to create or calculate the TP and SL level. So for TP, we say bit minus um, bit. Well, this is bit multiplied with tp percent divided by 100. This is like a um, calculation where we get like a percentage amount of the current price and subtract it from the open price of this position. Then we should round this, of course. So let's say tp is equal to normalized double tp. And then we do the same thing for the sl. So we say sl is equal to bit plus bit multiplied with SL percent divided by 100. And then we say SL is equal to normalized double SL 
comma underscore digits like this. And now we can exchange these zero parameters with SL and TP here in the cell function. Now we can just copy this block pretty much and paste it here for the buy signal. And then we will have to exchange all of these bits with ask because we open at the ask price, of course, since this is a buy position. And then for the TP, we will have to add something. For the SL, we will have to subtract something. And here we still add SL and TP. Now we can compile this and run the program again and check if it is working. Do not forget to compile, otherwise <laughs> the changes will not apply. So we have a cell position, there is a TP and a SL. Yeah, looks a little bit far away in the M15 chart. So we should switch to another chart. Let's say we want to trade on the one hour chart. Then the, the relation of TP and SL and the current price should be better, I think. Yeah, still a little bit far away. Maybe we should choose uh, half of the amount or 0 0.1 and 0. I don't know, 0 0.3. This will uh, look a little bit better. And we will close the position sooner. Yeah, you can see it now. The TP um, is like below the open price. The SL has, the, um, has a bigger uh, gap, but both levels are there and we can then just trade and see which level will be hit first. And now this is like the, the first part where we create the, um, like the, the, the general skeleton for this strategy. And this is when we are able to start testing because now we have a fully working system. This is of course not really like crash safe and this would not work in a live trading account with three or five other expert advisors probably, but this is enough to test the strategy because you can see there's a graph and yeah, we can now test this over several years and this is what I want to do in the next video. So what we did here is we just created the, like the really simple EA based on the money flow index indicator. Again, I can show you the whole code here, make it even a little bit bigger. So um, yeah, make sure to pause the video here and copy everything, do not forget anything like these semicolons or closing brackets or something like this. Yeah, you can just copy everything. And then you can use this for your own testing in the strategy tester. And this is what I will also do in the next video. I think I will test it, maybe optimize it a little bit, and then we will see if this might work. So the last part of the EA is here. So make sure to also copy this. And yeah, this is it for this video. Hope you liked it. Let me know in the comment section below if you want to see more with this indicator. And in the next video, I will do some testing. So um, subscribe, like, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.